Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Jessica Sanders here. Um, today I am creating a project uh, that's inspired by the Great British Bee Count. Now the website I sell my work on, which is artfinder.com, has teamed up with Friends of the Earth to bring awareness to how tiny bees make a huge difference in our lives. And so we're working on some art projects that are specifically related to that. And I wanted to do one with the Tim Holtz Distress Crayons, which is my new fun tool to play with. And so let's get started. So today I'm going to use a Heidi Swap stencil. You know, it's actually made for sprays, but it's going to work great for this project. And I'm going to use four colors of Distress Crayons. I have, let's see, what colors do I have? Fossilized Amber, Peeled Paint, Rusty Hinge, and Festive Berries. And I'm going to do three different techniques with these crayons today. I'm going to be a lot of fun. So, I'm also going to use a Faber Castell pit pen with the brush nib. And I have a water brush filled with water. So I'm going to put this wax paper, it makes a great sort of palette paper, inexpensive and disposable and easy to use. Um, and so here we go. So my idea, I guess, what I wanted to do was to do a background related to bees. And I'm just using untreated watercolor paper. And I'm going to use this blending tool with a sp sponge pad on it to put my pigment from the crayons onto my paper. And I'm going to just lay some out on my wax paper there. I'm going to lay out the fossilized amber and the rusty hinge. And I'm going to start from there. And then I'm going to add, let me go ahead and add a little bit of this festive berry and the peeled paint. Notice I have a lot more of the yellow, the fossilized amber than I have of anything else. That's because I already know I'm going to use more of that. And I'm just going to use the same foam pad for every color. And I'm just going to kind of rub that onto my foam pad. And then I'm going to swirl it onto my paper. And because I know I have the most pigment on there right now, I want to start where I want the most pigment, which is going to be here on this right side. And just swirl it on. And you can see where I started has more pigment, but as I work out from there, it has less. Pick up some more. I'm using the same color still. And then I want to put some actually, could have taped down this stencil, but it's time for that. And I'm using this on the other side as well. And just doing a swirling motion to pick up, lay that, to lay the pigment down onto the paper. And I want it to get lighter as I go toward the center. Okay. Now I also want to blend in some of these other colors. I just want a little bit of those. So I'm going to start with the closest color on the color wheel, which would be the Rusty Hinge, this orangey color. I see it has some little, like little clumps in it. And so I'm just kind of working that out with my sponge. And then I want this to be on the outside edge. So I'm just going to blend that in together. It's going to be subtle, but it's going to be nice. Pick up some more. Okay, now I'm going to go to the green, and I just want to add a little bit of green here on this side. As I said, it's very subtle, but it's really nice. And then the last color I want to pick up is the pink, the festive berry. And it's been sitting there drying a little bit, it's a little harder to pick up. 
I could wet it, but I just don't. I'm using a dry application this time, and I don't want to wet it. So I'm going to do just a little bit here. Just pink it up a little. Why not? Bees need pink, right? These are bees. Bees love flowers. I know their hives aren't pink, but you know, pink is awesome. Festive berry. These are great, highly pigmented colors. Really, really enjoying it so far. Okay, so you can see I have this really beautiful result. Is that lighting better? Having a little bit of a lighting problem here. Okay, there we go. So I think you can see I have a, a really nice result. I have a nice gradation of color depending on how much pigment I had on this foam kind of spongy blender. You could probably use a makeup sponge to do the same thing, but this handle is nice to give you the little little advantage, I think, of holding it. So that is step one. Now the next thing I want to do is um, <laughs> I'm going to make some little bees. Now I'm just learning to make bees, so just bear with me. And the way I'm going to do that is to do a, just a smudge of each of these two colors. All you have to do is twist it to get it to come up. Okay, so I'm going to do a little smudge of the fossilized amber and a little smudge, even smaller, of the rusty hinge. And I'm not, I'm not finished using this. Look, I can put the lid on the top. On the back yay okay because I'm not finished and then I'm gonna smudge them with my finger I want them to be small so I'm trying to be really careful to smudge them just in the area where I place them I think I need a little more pigment there and I'm gonna smudge just a little circle okay and then I'm gonna make several of those more pigment a little more pigment and I don't really know yet which way these bees are flying or anything like that I'm just kind of going with the flow and smudging them on and these are very simple simple bees just did the fossilized amber for that one Mm, a little bit. It's a bit. And then let me see. That's three bees. How many bees? We need? like five bees, right? Let's put one up here. Let's put a bee up here. And again, just this. My finger is dry, so this is all dry smudge smudging so far. You get the really light by using the foam blender. Um, and then you get a little bit more by using this direct pigment and adding the smudging with your finger. One, two, three, four. Where should I put my other bee? Maybe, maybe, maybe right here. Oh, that one's going to be big. It's going to be a big bee. But these are kind of going to be abstract bees. They're not going to be perfect bees. They're just kind of abstract bees. Okay. Now I'm going to let this dry a little bit because I'm going to come back with my pit pen and it will be easier if they've had a, a couple of minutes to dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to take my water brush and I'm going to kind of blend out the edges of the, the beehive, so to speak, these edges where it's more solid. And what I want to do is just very subtly take the color and blend it out. So my water brush is slightly wet. It's not super wet. And I hope you can see how that's sort of just lightening and scrubbing away the edge there. So it just kind of disappears into the paper. And of course the pigment is coming out onto the paper and that's what I wanted to do. And then my paper, my watercolor paper, will not be white. It will just be slightly pigmented. I want to be careful not to touch my bees that I've already made. 
because I don't want to pick up any pigment from there. I just want to lightly move the pigment around. Kind of make that fade, fade away on the edges. I'm going to do the same over here. And I think you can see as I just add a little bit of water to that, it just sort of dissolves. You can still see it lightly, but it really dissolves and, and spreads out into the paper, which is what I'm going for. And one more area. This is a pretty solid, pretty solid piece. Smudging it out a little, bringing that color out. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that and so far. You see how the edges are smudged away here. They're not here. They're not on this one, but they are on this one. My fingers that look, but they're smudged away a little bit here. And you can keep working on it and work it out more. But that's just, I just wanted it to be some little bit. All right, and there are my little bees. Okay, and then the last piece of this puzzle is with my pit pen. Now what I'm going to do is just draw some bees. And I have to turn the paper this way and that way to get um, going the way I want them to go. Okay, so the, the stripes on the bees curve toward the rear, toward the tail, so to speak. And I'm not making, you know, like, these are sort of abstract bees. Make the little antenna and some little legs. And there you have a bee. That little bee makes me very happy. Oh, you know what's missing? And I keep forgetting what's missing are the wings. So the way to draw the wings is kind of here. This is the little head. So kind of here by the head, you just kind of start here and you go out and you kind of make a, almost like a bow and come back. And then you do another one, but it's smaller on the other side. And you have some wings. And there we have a bee. And now it's bee number two. I don't know. I just like to draw their little head and the little tiny antenna. If you make the antenna too big, it makes a scary bee. And so there's a little bad bee. And you know, this would be cute for like a like a child's room. I want this bee to be flying into the, the honeycomb here. So I'm gonna make just like a little sketchy bee. Sketchy little stinger. Tiny stinger, a little bit of a head, and a little tiny antenna, and very tiny legs. Which bees are insects, they actually have six legs, but they don't have to on your drawing or your painting. And okay, I have two bees to go. I want this bee to be flying away, so I'm going to do, and this is all dry. Everything I did earlier is already dry, so it's kind of cool. And there goes my little bee flying and buzzing away. And this one I want to go toward, toward the hive. And I could actually make my bee flying any direction. Well, I made sort of ovals, so that affects which way your bee can go. But if you're making just a circle like this one, it could be flying any direction. So here we go. I have to turn this to make it work for me. And I think that is perfectly okay. I, I know some people say, don't turn your artwork and all of that. But, you know, you have to do what works for you. And that's the way I feel about it anyway. A little head, 
little antenna. This one looks like a ladybug. That's okay. It's just the impression of the legs and the little wings. Okay, there they are. Now I'm really liking this little piece. But it doesn't have any little bee trails. Which I kind of would like to have some bee trails. So let me get Let's see, how is this? This is my, you know what? Look what I did. I forgot the wings on every single one of them. I think though I'm going to use the Sharpie to draw the wings. The key to draw the wings, I wonder it looks like a ladybug. It has no wings. I don't know. The key to me is to go quick. Is the Sharpie going to work? Okay, it's not really working. So here's a tip. Using a very fine point over distress crayons does not work very well. You see, I had no problem with the brush tip. None whatsoever. But when I try to use this, even though, see on my practice piece, even though it writes perfectly here, it does not, it didn't write there. And this is dry, so it didn't, it just doesn't write very well over those those crayons is I think because of the creamy texture but it's not the sharpie itself it's the size of the nib so the tiny nibs are what you have to watch out for and you don't want to ruin your pins so important so I drew all of these bees and I failed to put the wings but that's okay because now we can do the wings let me see which way should I put the wings little wings you know, oh, make like a bow and another one and you know you could chew this up a little more if you wanted to I like the sketchy look so it works for me and then this piece flying up so just do this this one has tiny tiny wings look at that <laughs> that's awesome I think it's so cool how, you know, we can't figure out how a bumblebee can fly. Which these are honeybees supposed to be, but, you know. Kind of sketchy. I like them to be kind of curved. They're less threatening. They're curved. And like I said, I kind of like the sketchy look, so works for me. That one's on the other side. And now I have one more. And we're going to go. And do those wings. Okay. There we go. So I thought I was going to put bee trails. But I'm kind of liking that. Um, I'm kind of liking it the way it is now. Now that we don't. Now that they have wings. They look like bees. <laughs> okay. So I am going to call that done. I'm going to sign in my work. And thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun making this little tiny project. Um, and don't forget to go check out the Great British Bee Count. And that is on the Friends of Earth website. On uh, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, you can use hashtag Great British Bee Count or hashtag Art Finder Bees. And um, thank you for joining me for this Tim Holtz Distress Crayon Tutorial. And I will see you later. Bye.